Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mary Ann Monteleone. I'm Vice President of Professional Development for the Long Island Board of Realtors. And welcome on this beautiful spring day, which is a perfect setting for our very, very special guest who we've been chatting with. All right. We have Rose um, Nisker, who is a co-author of the app uh, Calm that we've all come to know. And I'd like to formally introduce Rose. Um, and let me, if you don't mind, I'm gonna read it. Okay. Rose Nisker is a mindfulness producer at the Calm app. As the daughter of a pioneering teacher in the mindfulness movement, she grew up seeped in the concepts and meditation practices that are now taught in schools, corporations, hospitals, and government agencies around the world. She completed her first silent meditation retreat at the age of 13 and has accumulated over 200 days of intensive retreat time. Rose holds a mindfulness meditation teacher training certificate through the Greater Good Science Center of UC Berkeley and teaching certificate in mindfulness-based stress reduction through Brown University Mindfulness Center. She teaches workshops and classes online and throughout the San Francisco Bay Area, sharing her passion for our innate capacity to experience our lives more fully, one moment at a time. So welcome, Rose. Thank you so much, Marianne, for that warm welcome and for organizing this. Um, and hello to all of you. Uh, as Marianne mentioned, my name is Rose Nisker, and I'm a mindfulness producer at the Calm app. Uh, and we're a mental wellness app with tools for sleep and meditation programs and music. So feel free to check that out anytime if you're curious. And also, as Marianne mentioned, I've been studying and teaching mindfulness meditation for many years now, and I'm so happy to be here today with all of you to talk a bit about mindfulness and share some tools that I hope you will find useful, especially during these um, stressful times, but really all, all the times. Um, and indeed, it has been particularly stressful for so many of us now for quite some time with everything that's been going on. Um, and I know for those of you in the real estate profession, there's been a lot of unique challenges. I mean, just such a huge level of change in how you do your work, learning so many new tools, um, shifting all your transactions online, and I imagine dealing with extra anxious buyers and sellers more than usual. Um, and that's not even to mention all of the changes outside of work that you might be dealing with. Kids at home, um, extra worry about health and loved ones. So it's a lot <laughs> and it's good to acknowledge that every once in a while, you know, hey, I've been dealing with a lot this year. There's been a lot of challenges. Maybe that's why I felt so stressed. So um, taking that can be a little relief. Oh yeah, that reminder of everything that's been going on. Um, so today I wanna talk a little bit about how to navigate this kind of stress um, and hopefully bring a bit more calm and focus into your everyday life. And we'll do also a guided meditation practice um, at the end of the session, but nothing fancy or um, very easy down to earth. And we'll also have a little time for questions. So if anything comes up, feel free to jot it down and then you can ask in a bit. But to start, I just want to talk a bit about mindfulness in general. Um, the word is floating around a lot these days. Um, I know in my work at the Calm app, we've seen um, thousands and thousands of people turning to mindfulness meditation to help um, deal with these times. And even before, you know, 2020 hit us in the face, even before that time, mindfulness had kind of um, 
it had been in the news. It had kind of become a bit of a buzzword. Celebrities talk about it. Um, and now it is really being taught in so many different sectors um, in schools and hospitals and companies around the world at this point. Um, and for good reason, there's also, you know, just been more and more scientific evidence pointing to the many mental and physical benefits of mindfulness practice. So just in the past, I think, decade or so of research, just to mention a few, um, it's been shown to lower blood pressure, help relieve stress, um, increase focus, reduce chronic pain and heart disease and improve sleep. So sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> Where do we sign up? Um, but the question might remain for some of us, what do we mean when we say mindfulness? What the heck is mindfulness anyway? Um, and to start, I just wanna give a few examples of what mindfulness isn't. So um, I think some of you may have had this experience before where you're driving home and you arrive and you realize you had been so lost in thought that you don't remember anything from the ride home. Or, you know, you start eating some chips and suddenly there's an empty bag in your hands and you feel like you didn't even really experience the eating of the chips. So that's in some sense the opposite of mindfulness. That's mindlessness. Um, and we can be very functional in that state, but it's like we're kind of on autopilot and our minds are just wandering along and we aren't really aware of what's happening in our moment to moment life experience. So if that's happened to you, you are certainly not alone. And in fact, it's such a common state um, that there have been several studies about it. Um, and one in particular is interesting from Harvard in 2010. Um, researchers there found that humans spend approximately 47% of their waking hours thinking about something other than what they're doing. So it's like half, half of our waking hours thinking about something else. Um, so right now I want to just do a little experiment. We'll check this, check this out for ourselves. Um, you can even close your eyes if you'd like, just briefly. And just notice where your mind is right now or where it has been for the last minute or so. I won't take it personally if it wasn't completely present for what I've been saying. Maybe you were thinking about a conversation from earlier today or planning what needs to get done later. Just get curious and check it out. What, what's been occupying your mind for this last little period of time? Good. And you can open your eyes if they were closed. So as you can probably see in your own mind, we do indeed spend a lot of time contemplating events that happened in the past or what might happen in the future or things that may never have happened at all or never will happen. Um, and, you know, there's, there's something to be said for let daydreaming and you know that's a great creative part of being human as well but um, if we start getting into that habit here is the kicker that is from the same study at Harvard so that same study that showed how often our minds wander um, that study also showed that mind wandering typically makes us less happy <laughs> so even if the subjects were thinking about um, a fantasy vacation or a wonderful meal or something pleasant, just a simple fact that their minds were thinking about something other than what they were doing, that in itself lowered levels of well being and happiness. So um, these Harvard researchers wrote, wrote this um, 
a little summary of this study, so interesting. They said, mind wandering is an excellent predictor of people's happiness. How often our minds leave the present is a better predictor of our happiness than the activities in which we are engaged. So there it is. <laughs> what we're doing is in some sense less important to our happiness and well-being than how we're doing it, how present we are with it. So this is where mindfulness comes in. It's kind of the mindfulness to the rescue in this case. Um, with mindfulness practice, um, both meditation and bringing uh, the training from meditation out into the world, we start to develop the ability to bring our attention back to the present moment, to be more present for what we're doing, to become aware of our thoughts, our feelings, um, our surrounding environment. So in some sense, mindfulness is helping us wake up from the autopilot mode where our thoughts are just sweeping us along on this endless current and where we really become kind of habitually disconnected from our lives. Um, so we'll do another little thought experiment here. Um, think about a time when you were watching a really engaging movie or maybe the 15th episode of a Netflix show that you've been watching in one sitting as the case may be these days. Um, and you're right there with the protagonist, maybe it's a thriller and they're about to turn the corner and meet the villain and you're totally absorbed in the feelings of fear and anticipation and your nervous system might be activated. Um, but then at some point your phone vibrates or the dog barks and suddenly you're just back on your couch and you disengage from all of the reactions and the drama that you were so absorbed in just a moment before. Um, and that's in some sense similar to how we experience our lives. We're so engrossed in our own movies, the movies of our mind are, you know, the stories and thoughts and fears and these kind of ruminations. And we often go for long stretches of time without being able to disengage from our movie. And kind of the older school example of this would be, you know, of course, in the movie theater, and you're watching a movie super engaged with all the drama, and then you turn around and see the projector. So that's in some sense what we're doing with mindfulness is not just bringing our attention to the present moment, but we're getting some space and perspective from these thought patterns and reactions that often keep us stuck in states of stress or anxiety, these ruminations. And by developing this mindful awareness, this looking back at the projector and getting some perspective, um, we're less likely to just play out these old habits of thinking and living. So really opening up this new kind of freedom in our lives. Um, but this is not to say, you know, once we become more mindful or present with our experience that everything's going to be great. Um, part of this is also cultivating an ability to notice and be present with un pleasant thoughts and experiences as well. Um, so we'll try something again right now. And like I said, we'll do a longer meditation practice, but just for a moment here, um, close your eyes again, if you'd like, and just take a few deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling. Maybe feeling your feet on the floor or the support of the chair underneath you. Now just check out what's happening right now for you. Maybe you're feeling a little anxious or stressed. Or maybe you're feeling just generally good. Just notice what's happening 
just get curious in a non-judgmental way. Good. So open your eyes again if they were closed. So in this way of kind of just getting curious, you're kind of your own laboratory. Um, you're just acknowledging what's happening without adding layers of judgment on top of what, you know, what's happening, what you're experiencing. Because really a lot of suffering can come from this kind of constant wishing our experience were different or avoiding how we're feeling or pretending things aren't as difficult as they are. So, you know, things like being anxious about being anxious. That's one I go to. It's a, you know, adding this layer or being frustrated about being mad. Um, and I think this comes into play a lot in the world right now with, you know, what we're dealing with is a, it's a high level of uncertainty and stress. I think that we're kind of feeling collectively right now. And part of the work of mindfulness is kind of acknowledging in a non-judgmental way hey, I feel anxious, I feel scared, I feel just crappy, and that's okay. Um, kind of like in the beginning when we acknowledged how much has been going on, it's like having at least a few moments where we can be okay with not being okay and not adding these additional layers or pushing against the experience or you know, telling ourselves I shouldn't be feeling this way. Um, and in that it's kind of counterintuitive, but just by acknowledging it and kind of like, okay, this is what's happening, that in itself can create a bit more ease with how we're experiencing these challenging moments. So all of that said, um, I wanna get to our meditation practice and have some time for questions. Um, so we're gonna do this meditation practice exercise, um, very low key. We're not trying to think of anything in particular or clear our minds or be a certain way or feel a certain thing. Get enough of that as we've seen, you know, just through um, talking through mindfulness, you know, I think that's really a go-to is trying to be and do and, you know, something different than what is actually happening. So, in this practice, we're just going to explore, you know, really start to develop that ability to be present and notice what's happening in our experience. Um, your minds will probably wander and that's totally normal. We'll be using the breath and the body to anchor ourselves in the moment and just um, get curious and, you know, approach this with some kindness towards yourself and an openness to exploring whatever you might be experiencing in this moment. So to start, you can find any position that's comfortable for you. You can sit on a chair, you can sit on the floor if that's more comfortable. And just closing your eyes and starting to settle into the body. The body is a great way to come back to the present moment, interrupt our thought patterns. So feeling any points of contact with the chair or the floor. Maybe you feel the soles of the feet on the floor or the support of the chair beneath you. Maybe you feel kind of the gentle pull of gravity on the lower body as you settle in here. And now taking a few deeper breaths, inhaling, feeling your body expand with fresh oxygen and exhaling, settling in right here, right now. And again, inhaling, expanding, and exhaling, arriving and settling. 
this kind of can this can kind of feel like a snow globe you know <laughs> we're shaking up all the little flecks of snow and glitter are all swirling around and this is a moment when those flecks of snow or glitter start to settle so just settling here Now scanning through the body, noticing if there's any areas of extra tension. And gently softening if possible. Relaxing through the face. Softening the muscles around the eyes. Relaxing the forehead, softening the jaw, letting the shoulders feel heavy, relaxing the belly, and letting the hands just rest gently. And now we're just going to check in with ourselves again. Noticing our mood or any thoughts or emotions that are present, or even body sensations. Maybe you're feeling the pull of a task you set aside to attend this session, or the pull of the outside sunshine. Maybe you're feeling settled. Maybe you're questioning if you have time to do this whole meditation thing. Just checking in and letting whatever is here be present. Just noticing it. Knowing it's okay to feel however you're feeling. Now gently shifting the attention to the feeling of the breath. Maybe it's the feeling of the breath coming in and going out the nostril or upper lip. Or the rise and fall of the chest or belly. And maybe we just have a sense of the whole body breathing. Breathing in, breathing out. If the mind wanders, no problem. That's the nature of the mind. Just acknowledging that it's wandered and gently bringing your attention back to the breath. Breathing in and breathing out. If you can notice the very beginning of each inhale and then follow the breath all the way through to the end of each exhale. So 
the mind wanders again, no problem. Or if you get distracted by a sound, something in your environment, just notice it and come back to the feeling of the breath or the feeling of the body seated here. If your mind is busy or you find yourself getting lost in the content of the thoughts and getting swept along, you might even give a simple label to the thoughts as they arise. Planning, remembering, or even just a simple thinking. Not worrying about the content, just acknowledging the thinking without getting carried away. Coming back to the breath back to the feeling of the body sitting here. Anchoring in this present moment, we just continue to observe the thoughts floating through. Breath coming in, breath going out. Feeling the breath move through the body. And letting the breath breathe you. Again, if there's sound in your environment, that's okay. Just noticing it, sound. And as this practice comes to a close, you can take a moment to appreciate that we've taken the time for this today. Just taking this time to explore our moment to moment experience. taking another deep breath and starting to move the body around a bit and as you end here you can open your eyes and come back together here and so I hope that was interesting um you know it's uh, Sometimes you'll sit for a whole period of time like we did, maybe your mind was wandering pretty much the whole time. But even just those moments, you know, those 10 seconds of being able to come out of your movie of the ruminations and the thought patterns can be a really powerful um, way to get some ease with what's happening um, with yourself and your life. And I want to emphasize too that, you know, meditation, I think there's often this idea that we have to be in this perfect, um, quiet environment. I don't know if you heard, but it was garbage day on my street and also the neighbors are doing some gardening. So, you know, we really don't have to be in a perfect environment. Um, we don't have to empty our mind of thoughts. This kind of meditation practice really, um, it's really just about, again, bringing ourselves into this present moment, getting a little space from maybe our patterns of stress and anxiety, 
And you can do the same thing, you know, when you're um, driving or in the shower or doing dishes, you know, you can feel the water on your hands and notice, you know, what's happening in your body and in your mind in those moments as well. So in the middle of a busy day or when you're in line, just coming into the body, you know, maybe feeling the points of contact, like in the soles of the feet and um, noticing the breath. And that can be a really powerful tool in itself. I mean, I'm not going to, the secret is you don't have to meditate for a long period of time every day for it to have an effect. This is really something to take out into the world with you. So, so I think that's about all for now. I want to leave time for some questions. And um, I think I see there's in the chat. Um, uh, if there's any questions, either you can, I think you can pass them along to Marianne or I'll see them here in the chat. Um, um, yes, hi, hi Rose, it's Marianne. Hi, we, Marianne. we have some uh, comments, one from Jessica, very nice, thank you. Um, so Jessica really wanted to, um, you know, put that in the chat and thank you. And also Michelle, thank you, I needed that. And that was wonderful. So we're having all these comments. You know, um, Roy is asking a question, do you also do yoga? I find that it complements meditation. Also try meditating with bare feet, touching the ground. It adds a new dimension. Yes, fantastic comment, Roy. I think that's a great thing you know, anything that's kind of tactile and yoga as well, anything that helps us get into our body can help, um, you know, bring us into the present moment and get a little more ease with what's happening. Um, there's also, uh, you can also do something which can be helpful to bring yourself into the moment, which is just noticing what you see, what you feel, what you hear, what you taste, what you smell. That's another little technique to be like, okay, you know, if you're really getting lost in um, a thought pattern or, you know, anxiety, that can be a really nice way to just take a moment and come, you know, come back to what's happening right now. So. Um, we also have from Linda, how do we get your recorded voice to practice this more? Oh, well, <laughs> let's see. Well, this was recorded. So um, hopefully there wasn't too much background noise with uh, what's happening on my block here today. But, um, you know, I have some recordings, nothing that's really available um, publicly, but I'd be happy to send along meditations to anyone here. If you um, just message me, you can get my email from Marianne. And then, of course, the Calm app as well has um, uh, our main teacher there is Tamara Levitt. So her voice is also quite nice for meditation. Um, I'm, I'm putting now in um, under Linda answering her question. Let me come on camera. Um, OK. Hi. Um, hi. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that on lirealtor.com forward slash COVID, we have all of our recorded webinars and Rose has been gracious enough to allow us to record this and we will have that up there for all of our members. So it's on lirealtor.com forward slash COVID and you scroll all the way to the bottom and all of our recorded webinars are there. Every Wednesday webinar is there and Rose, um, this recorded webinar will be there in about a day. So for anyone who wants to listen again, um, I do have a question. The, the profile of the realtor is very, very hectic. You know, the, the, the work-life balance is always a challenge. Um, the cell phone, the email, the drop everything, the run to the appointment, the pressure of if I don't go, you know, could that have been a sale? So, you know, do you have any suggestions if they don't take the this, you know, eight minutes, whatever that was, five minutes, you know, how to kind of center again? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, kind of like what I started to say, and I think you're, you know, this is a great example, I think, <laughs> for real estate professionals, especially, 
you know, finding those moments when you don't have to be in a, in the perfect spot or at home or finding those moments in your car and, you know, taking literally 30 seconds or a minute, um, again, to just notice the breath. It can be such a powerful thing. I mean, it sounds so simple and yet, um, it's very, it can be a very centering thing. It can really help with you know, I, I use that snow globe <laughs> analogy at the beginning of the meditation. Yeah, that was great. You know, we're, we are shaken up and in, in that kind of hectic life where it's 24 seven and it's always, you know, we just get used to that feeling of being kind of <laughs> shooken up inside all the time. Yeah. So, so that, yeah, so that, that 60 seconds of breathing can kind of feel like you settle all of that. And, you know, it doesn't mean that all of the hecticness won't be there still. I mean, but you have that sense of like, oh yeah, it, it doesn't, there's no way you can get it all done at once. And I think that can add to the hectic feeling is we have this sense of, oh, we can get it all done at once or this all needs to happen at one time. And that can also help with that. Yes, the visual of a snow globe is great. It has new meaning for me. <laughs> yeah, now you see a snow yeah. globe, you won't want to shake it up. Anymore. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so the Calm app is um, something they can find on the Apple Store and yep. they can try it out if they choose to. And sure. yeah, and certainly come back to our website and, and again, you know, lirealtor.com forward slash COVID and you can um, take a moment to relax and, and um, recenter with Rose through the recorded version. So we thank you so very much. Yeah, it was great to be with you all. And yeah, I, I really, um, I applaud all of you for all that you've been dealing with in this time. It's, it's so much change and yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And you stay well and safe and, and we hope to have you back for the next, the next level. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Rose. Thanks. Enjoy the day, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.